features of uh, bradykinesia, the tremor, rigidity, postural instability. And uh, this affects worldwide, and thousands of people are suffering uh, all over the world. And age group is common between 50 to 60, though the younger individuals are also there. So they, uh, this, how this came into picture is, when a surgeon operating on a patient with essential tremor, accidentally he ligated an artery to the thalamus. The moment he ligated the artery, the tremor disappeared. So this is how it started. And they thought of uh, stimulating a spikes in the brain to overcome the symptoms of uh, diabetes. Where a battery is placed and the uh, electrical stimulation is delivered to particular sites in the brain. So when we talk about DBS, it goes in three phases. One is the uh, first and the foremost is the patient selection. And second thing is uh, a role of a neurologist and a neurosurgeon inside the theater. And the third is a post-op uh, programming. So this is how a DBS goes. The patient selection is foremost important in um, doing the brain stimulation. Because when the patient is selected in a wrong or when the patient have any danger signs, we call it as a red flag signs, uh, the surgery will not take, uh, not turn up into a successive way. So the patient selection will be done by a neurologist and operative will be done by a neurologist and the neurosurgeon together and the third is programming which is playing with the parameters uh, that is done by a neurologist. So different stim stimulations, the basics is we stimulate called targets in the brain. So if a patient suffering from essential tumor, there is a nucleus called VIN in the thalamus. By stimulating this electrode, uh, this is a very small nucleus here called the VIN nucleus. We place an electrode close to that and this is a contact which delivers currents to the nucleus and the patient come, overcomes these symptoms. And for Parkinson's disease and dystonia, this is the site, it's called the subthalamic nucleus, we call it as STN nucleus. And the, the globus pallidus is a site for primary dystonia and sometimes we use for Parkinson patients also. So when uh, talking about STN nucleus, the size of the nucleus is about 5 into 7 millimeter and small almond shaped nucleus uh, sitting deep in the brain, in the midbrain. So when a patient with a, uh, Parkinson's with tremor predominant variant and other symptoms like rigidity and postural instability, we choose uh, this as a target site when we need to place a one millimeter wire into this place. That's why the twist. And here you can see, this is the subthalamic nucleus. The problem is, uh, all the vital structures lies close to here. You could see the green fibers, green wings flying there. This is the fibers of the internal capsule. And this is big red eye like things is the red nucleus. And the third nerve roots lies here. And the medius laminiscus lies here. And when we go, when the electrode goes exactly in STN, that's a success. But all the side effects is comes when the electrodes is not in place. When it displays into the internal capsule, patients can have jerky movements of the limb. When it goes to the ocular motor nipples, intraoperatively, patients can have double visions. And when it goes down, patients will have all sensory symptoms. So the risk and the skill is placing or landing the electrode in this small place. And this guy is uh, a case of primary dystonia, who got dystonia of uh, leg, tongue, neck, Name the part, you could see the story in him. And for him, the ideal side is a GPI. So for him, uh, do you think the drugs going to work? No, he's suffering with this for almost 23 years. But his uh, IQ is normal. He could operate on uh, a smartphone with his nose. And going uh, into it, GPI is not also an easy task. Because uh, here, you could see the ophthalmic tracks is running close to here. And we program to base this leads passing through the putamen, GPE, and we land up, we should land up here in the GPA. And this results in a reduction of dystonia. And with regard to essential tremors, we think that essential tremor is mild thing which doesn't bother us. We can keep going. It comes in the age of 60. It sometimes reduces with an intake of alcohol, all those things. But uh, this can be severe at times. The whole body jerks and uh, the speech has also got tremors. But then we need to place a needle here called a limb nucleus. Thalamus is an exit structure. A limb lies exactly in the middle of the nucleus 
and we place a link here and stimulating it starts to come off. So you know that part of the disease, the four cardinal features is chronic anemia, trauma rigidity and postural. When we talk about Parkinson's, why we go or whether Parkinson, why it should be a surgical procedure, everyone will ask this question the moment we talk about a surgical procedure to a patient with Parkinson's disease. Yes, the stage progress is like this. And uh, stage one, the patient will have unilateral symptoms, quite well, no need for medications to do physiotherapy. Stage two, the patients have bilateral symptoms, then they will worry, then they approach the doctors at some times. They become dependent and then they approach the doctor for these symptoms. And uh, stage four is wheelchair or bed bound, the thing. Um, this is the stage house. And stage one and stage two is little predictable, but stage three and stage four is totally unpredictable. We can't judge which guy will jump to the next stage. And the first uh, five surprising facts about advanced Parkinson's disease is, yes, at one point of time, your syndrome, the neck considers the nectar of the Parkinson disease, will cause hallucinations, delusions, and all sort of side effects. I'll show you what is this kind of the worst side effect with this medication. At one point, the patient can end up in this side effect. And the complications during the stage three is though non-neurological, they have aspiration things, the bed sores, so they can kill them. So these are life-threatening complications in this advanced stage. And the most thing is the diagnosis comes when some loss of motor still happens, then only they come to know. And uh, patient sufferers are unaware of the advanced treatment options available at the next year. When I went to a camp in Kadalu, uh, a patient told that a DPS, uh, yes, my doctor suggested me DPS, but he told that it's done in US. So that's the awareness about DBS is, uh, in, this, in our part of the world. So, and the final and the most important thing is Parkinson is progressive. It is a neurodegenerative, but it's never a death sentence. A patient can lead a normal life with advanced procedures. And here's our mission is to pull back the stage from, yeah, you are, you are trying to just turn the clock back where at the honeymoon period, three to five years, patients can be low dose of syndrome, they will be doing good. When it jumps to the moderate PD, predictable things, but there will be ups and downs in the symptoms, and when the advance, nothing is predictable. And now, with the help of uh, deep brain stimulation, we are turning the clock back from the advanced stage to early PD stage, where the patient can live a normal life. So, uh, I start with the case we can So, this gentleman who came from Tanzania, this gentleman is here, uh, came to, he traveled all the way from Tanzania to New York International with a scope. Uh, to, can you click on the image? Hero? Can you click on the image? <coughs> video, video. Yeah. So he came uh, with the no hope. He thought that something is there. Uh, we go abroad and see something. He was dependent totally and uh, he needed four persons to rise. And his son's only expectation was, my father has to rise from the chair independently without anyone's help. That was his only uh, like expectation. Can you click on the third video? Yeah. This is two weeks down line at the brain stimulation. He was able to walk on his own uh, without anyone else. And there was 35% reduction in his medications also. And uh, he happily went back home. This is what the magic that the EBS does. Yes, when I talk about something, everyone should not take uh, things that, yes, it can turn a uh, patient into a normal life. No. DPS will, uh, DPS will not reverse some of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease like dementia, depression, psychosis, and non-modal symptoms like constipation. But something, if resistant to syndrome, switch will not improve. If a balance and freezing of age which is resistant to syndrome will not, be, uh, will not improve. So though this is theory, the first guy that I have shown you had a severe freezing of gait, but after deep brain stimulation, he is able to walk. And why? BMT is a, not bone marrow translation, is the best medical therapy. So when a drug, not only syndrome, but there's like a list of five to six drugs in the market, when a best medicine is available, why should we think about deep brain stimulation? This is a question that runs in everyone's mind. Here is the answer. Deep brain stimulations improves the quality of life, activities of daily living, it improves the motor functions and medication reductions, and long-term safety and effectiveness is well proven with a deep brain stimulation. Imagine if a patient with a Parkinson disease, Tarasso disease, if he gets off period for two hours with the medication of Sindaba 1, and he's going to take four, he'll be all right for, uh, for eight hours in a day. But what happens to the rest of the day? Will he be able to go to the job? No, never. 
So he will be normal, taking the medicines, sitting all right, normal, doing some uh, works at the home, but he cannot go back to his uh, normal life ever. So this is bridged by the brain stimulation, which gives an additional 5.2 hours of disease free states, and the patient can go back to his work. That was a matter of this time. And with respect to dyskinesia, dyskinesia, don't think it's uh, just a moment of hands. It can be so disabling. I'm going to show some videos after this. And a patient with a deep brain stimulation, and it goes uh, this thing. This is a graph we put. Uh, here, the gray line indicates without DPS, only medications, the patient will be either in off time or will jump to a troublesome dyskinesia. This is a normal life, uh, normal thing. But he never lies there. Most of the days he will be either off or he takes cinder bar, he will dance, and if he cut off the cinder bar, he will become a doll. So he could not lead a normal life without a different stimulation. But with DBS, the fluctuations is reduced. With the fluctuation between the off time and the troublesome dyskinesis is reduced, and patient will be um, symptom free. And uh, I need to keep that. So dyskinesis can be so troublesome. This is a home based video. Uh, it can be so troublesome. This one tablet of syndrome can induce such troublesome dyskinesias, which uh, where a deep brain stimulation comes into the pictures and save them from all the side effects. And the dyskinesias at times may not be so troublesome. Can you click on the second video? So to an extent, it prevents from leading a normal life. So I asked her to drink uh, water from a bottles, he was not able to do that with, without, with all these discounts. Yeah, this is the effect produced by the medication, syndopoposis test. And uh, yeah, for COVID you can suggest uh, different stimulations. Can you keep on the second one, video? So this guy, uh, first one is from Sudan, he got tremors in both hands. And the second video is this uh, patient who came from Fiji Island, uh, got tremors of the uh, hands, the chin, and even he had a tremors in his uh, leg. Uh, so this is a troublesome tremors, what we usually don't see. So this is the tremor that we got. Uh, so it interacts with his daily activities. He's not going to job because of this refugee guy. And essential tremors, uh, I need to click on the video. Tremor, tremors, essential tremors, will shake the whole body. See a housewife, and this uh, second uh, lady is from uh, Somewhere from the south, I remember Nagapatnam. So, the husband uh, says that they're living alone and uh, his wife has to cook for daily. So, uh, he's very worried about her symptoms. So, essential tremors could be severe at times. And yeah, DPM stimulation does not work only for neurological indications, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, this condition is approved by the FPA. It's one of the psychiatric disorders which improves with the brain stimulation, only thing the target differs. Uh, this gentleman is working in Rani Pet Bell, he got a very obsessive disorder and uh, the one who is sitting at the corner is his wife. Because of his obsession, uh, uh, she left him in the Rani Pet and she moved to the. I made her understand that this is a symptom, this is a disease, not a, this is not as well. And he was started on syndrome by someone. And he took the second and he got this uh, finger movements and uh, agilities is all because of syndrome. So deep brain stimulation works uh, well for obsessive disorder, obsessive compulsive disorders. So other indications, though FDA has been not approved, CE, CE does the Association of Europe has approved uh, other things. This gentleman works in uh, Rizopan. Why I'm showing him is he got a different problem from neurological. He got uh, substance abuse, alcohol addiction. Uh, this one, substance abuse, a nucleus called nucleus accumens in the brain, uh, which, which is responsible for this addiction and substance abuse. The brain stimulations can take uh, back and put them in a normal life. So when you see red flag signs, especially atypical PD, we call Parkinson's plus disease, the brain stimulation never works. So after I started spreading awareness, people are coming and uh, asking for the brain stimulation. But nine or uh, say eight out of ten are PD plus disease, our advanced PD disease. So the awareness need to reach the people before that. In the early stage, better. Then there is a response to medication that's the thing they have to undergo the brain stimulation. When everything is uh, end, when uh, becomes advanced or it's a PD plus disease, this will not work. So what? How can you refer a patient to uh, for a deep brain stimulation? One simple test. I need to get the second video. 
So uh, the first guy, uh, the first videos is off dose without medication. So his wife needs to pull him out from the chair. The second does on effect. When you give Sindapa, he's able to rise from the chair without him. So if you are able to pick up, or if the patient himself will tell this history. So this is the stage where a Parkinson patient should undergo the brain stimulation. And there is an effect. That's the stage they have to come for a neuro stimulation. And this is an uh, Afros officer. Click on. Click both. That saves time. So the first video is of a fact. He came in wheelchair. Can you a second? So with one dose of Sindaba, he started running in the corridor. So this, when you see this FX, yes, uh, he will definitely benefit with different stimulation. So there are some different situations. When we want to do it in a more professional way, there is a screening tool called uh, uh, Early Stimulus. It's available in uh, Google Play as well as in Apple Store. So you, this is going to ask you some few questions. And if you answer these questions, it will give a scale from 1 to 9. Any patients with a score of less than 3 is inappropriate. That means deep brain stimulation will not work for them. And a score of 7, 8, 9, yes, they will do very well. And 7, 4 to 5 equivocal results can come. But still they undergo this advisable to undergo deep brain stimulation. Then sometimes it becomes very difficult to say or judge whether this guy is going to in the path of parking or he is going to divert and turn up into a PD plus. This we come across often. So initially they all look the same. Uh, but over the years, they rapidly progress and they die. So this is PD plus. So to differentiate them, we have to advance the scans called product scan, or, uh, where you could see uh, a difference, uptake in the dopamine. That's called this product scan, which can differentiate an early PD and a Parkinson plus disease. And this is how it's done. It's very simple. You got a lead, you got an extension wire, and a battery. So we have to put that in and we have to program with an external components. So surgical aspects, we need to know about stereotaxy, anatomy of facial ganglia, and radiology. So we do scans, MRI and CT scans. We merge them and we need to know only three parameters. One is called the x-axis, which says how medial, how lateral is our target, and anterior posture, how far depth is where and the y axis tells us how much distance it's in deep from the scalp. So we do have a software which does everything for us. It merges the CT, it merges the MRI and it reconstructs the skull and it gives a final thing. So once the frame is fixed, we do a CT scan and the CT scan is going to give us a nine coordinates and this will convert the skull into a 3D volume. So we will know that where is our target exactly, it's the computer tells us. And according to that, we fix the frame and we position the patients. And this procedure is done under local anesthesia. Can you click on? So this is done under local anesthesia. Um, the patient will be conscious throughout the procedure. Only the scalp is a pain sensitive thing. The skull, the brain is insensitive. Yes, the dura is pain sensitive. We infiltrate blood kind and drops means when you open up. So after Going in, we put a lot of wires into the brain and we start recording using microelectro recordings. When our, it passes through the thalamus, a different kind of signals is uptime. When it passes through STN, it gives a typical sound called a ring, a tin on ring. So we get this sounds. When we get these sounds, we know yes, we are there. And we place the electrodes. Can you click on the video? Yeah, this is what it says. It is there. Uh, yeah, it's like the rain on a tin. So when you hear the sound, we make sure that the lead is in position. And uh, we do an intro uh, assessment. This guy is conscious, he's conversing with me inside the theater, he's having very bad tremors. He's going to have tremors in his right hand. And the moment we put on the current, his tremor goes up. So that's what, he's talking to me, and at the same time we measure the side effects, like if you got a diplopia or not, having a very bad tremor now. And uh, the moment the switch is on, when the current is given, the tremors will disappear. This time is short of time, sir. Yes, we are at the end. Two more slides. Hence, <laughs> the lead is in position. Yes. Then the battery will be placed under general anesthesia. The battery will be beneath the skin, below the clavicle, preferably on the right side. And we do a post-op programming where we adjust the parameters according to the symptoms of the disease. And the patient 
terms of the can you run the video? This is the last video I have got both together. I think you have seen this Fiji guy before with very gross tremor and two weeks down line he is able to carry out his uh, activity on his work. And with that I am going to end my talk. Uh, Parkinson patients can walk and talk again. This is the message I am facing. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very wonderful lecture. Now I request uh, Dr. Uh, Bhutan Parma. Stay for the patient. Only days stay for the patient. So we have given the protocol seven days. Uh, a cost, cost of if we need to, if we are just importing the battery from US, the battery cost alone is six lakhs. The procedure <coughs> doesn't cost much. So it comes around another two lakhs. So the process is all between six to eight lakhs. And you need to change the battery frequently? There are two types of batteries. One is a permanent, which lifetime is five years. Uh, the other one is a rechargeable one, whose lifetime is nine years. What is the cost difference? But it automatically stimulates or you have to, uh, I mean, when there's a terminal, it is to No, we set programs. So it will, it will run. When the patient doesn't want, he can put it off with a remote. A nine years battery is, uh, five year battery is six. Uh, nine year battery is double the charge. And they are now coming with a new battery in 25 years. So that is also the same price. Parkinson's disease develops usually in the elderly. Is there any age restriction? I understand this. Parkinson's plus is not IDK. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. We keep the upper end as open. So 80, 84 male, well preserved cognition, we offer them. And we say, and we never say no. If you don't have a dementia, yes, he has the rights to get DBS and the association also approves it. And insurance covers this? Yes, sir. DBS is covered, DBS is covered by all the teams. And I think there's some waiting period, and some insurance can tell that this is a disease which you've got before. So while taking insurance, I advise them not to tell about it. So it's DBS So it's called bridging. It's a neurodegenerative disease. DBS, there is definitely 35 to 50 percent reduction in medication after the procedure. It's never said that medications can be stopped after the procedure. It bridges and put the patient back to a normal life, and he can go for the job. So you should continue the medication? Or you continue the yes, sir. We need to continue the medication, but the dosage reductions is from 35 to 50 percent. Thank you. Thank you.